Let's talk about the paranasal sinuses. There are four paranasal sinuses. There's a frontal sinus, an ethmoid sinus, a maxillary sinus, and a sphenoid sinus. The sinuses are named for the bones that they live in. So let's go ahead and go over those bones. This is the frontal bone right here, and the frontal sinuses live just superior to the orbit. So one frontal sinus would be here, and the other frontal sinus would be here. Let's move on to the ethmoid sinus. And before we do that, we need to say that the term ethmoid sinus has been retired in favor of the term ethmoid air cells for reasons that I hope will become apparent as we keep going. This is the ethmoid bone right here. And towards the other side of the ethmoid bone, towards the nasal cavity, that's where the ethmoid air cells live. The ethmoid uh, air cells drain into the nasal cavity. In fact, all of the paranasal sinuses will eventually drain into the nasal cavity. This is the maxilla here, and that's where the maxillary sinus lives. That's the largest of the paranasal sinuses. Let's go ahead and consider the last sinus, which is the sphenoid sinus. This is the sphenoid bone right here. You can see it's very, very thin. In fact, it's broken in a couple of places. In fact, that's what gets you into trouble with sinusitis. If you have sinusitis because the bone is so thin, if you have an aggressive infection or if you have somebody who's immunocompromised, then that bone can be worn away and the structures just on the other side of that bone can be involved. In the case of the sphenoid sinuses, you see that you've got pretty easy communication here with the middle uh, cranial fossa and that could be a real problem. This is where the uh, frontal sinuses live and if you wear through the frontal sinuses, anteriorly here, you can get into the anterior cranial uh, fossa. Let's go ahead and see if we can make those sinuses uh, appear a little bit better by using a flashlight. So this shows right here that you've got a hollow part of the sphenoid bone and that's where the sphenoid sinuses live. I think we can also light up the frontal sinuses here and show where the frontal sinuses live. Let's go ahead and do the same thing with our skull here. So remember that the frontal sinuses, in addition to being able to involve the anterior cranial fossa, if you wear through the superior part of the orbit, you can involve the orbit if you have a, an aggressive case of sinusitis. Let's go ahead and see if we can light up those, the frontal sinus, and you can see there that that is indeed hollow right there. That's the frontal sinus. Let's do the same thing with the maxillary sinus. You can see that that lights up fairly nicely also. And you can see that the uh, floor of the orbit is relatively thin. And you can wear through that in a, a patient who has an aggressive maxillary sin sinusitis. Okay. Last one that we're going to consider are the ethmoid air cells. Again, the ethmoid air cells live very, very close to the orbit, and you can get a secondary involvement of the orbit in these patients. Let's go ahead and try to light that up also. This is kind of difficult to do, so I may end up bumping the tripod, so I'm going to go ahead and ask for forgiveness for that if that does happen. But there you can see those are the ethmoid air cells right there, and I think it's pretty apparent why they're called ethmoid air cells as opposed to the ethmoid sinus. Thank you.